I actually think that, you know, the level of complexity and, and uh, uh, well, it is, it's artificial intelligence. Some of these machines, they're scary, actually, when you see some of the things that they can do. And sometimes, I've got to say, I don't spend too much time thinking about robots taking over the world. But if I was to ponder it, it with any kind of uh, great thought looking into some of the things that they can do, I think it is quite scary, actually. I think you've got to be careful what you wish for sometimes when you're almost trying to create the future and you're pushing boundaries all the time. Um, but a robot did take my job, by the way. I used to be a checkout girl. And as you will know, if you've been to a supermarket lately... Those things are few and far between, aren't they? It's all self-service these days. Yes, but some of us would really like the checkout people back. Would you? Yes. The, so, I... the self-service machines are far stupider than the checkout cashier. Interesting well, about the least at risk. The jobs because least we, at we've risk. Talked about, we've talked about the jobs that are most at risk, mm -hmm. but it was interesting how these researchers identified the jobs least at risk. They started by physicists, neurologists... And then pathologists, neuropsychologists, and then it went down to chief executives. Chief executives. Uh, and, but surgeons. But it didn't actually say politicians. So I don't know if politicians could be most at risk or least at risk. I have no idea. But I think it comes down to the fact that, uh, as Mary was saying, you know, the trouble is they will not have that sense of judgment that you hope a human being has. So I'm not terribly, terribly concerned about this. I say, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a continuation of what we've seen for the last 200 years. Increasing automation, which makes a lot of sense. Lots of these jobs are unpleasant and laborious, sense. and we'd rather uh, people weren't, weren't having to do them, I think.